main ways that we do this is through the instruments that we use throughout the show. They're typically drumming instruments because drumming creates a very visceral and tribal response in the audience. They can feel the pulse and the beat of what we're doing. And uh, it also creates a really intimate internal response in which heightens the level of what the, sh the show and the Blue Men are trying to achieve. Anything can happen while we're working together. Training kind of coexists with our rehearsal period. Um, we do our uh, initial audition, which is usually three to four days or so of, of callbacks, and then uh, if they like you enough and they see the blue man within you, they'll uh, ask you to come to a training. And training usually runs about eight weeks or so, and that's when we kind of learn the necessary skills that we need to, and also we learn the different numbers from the show and get ready to go into the show. It's kind of like an extended audition is what it is. It's they, uh, they bring as many people as they feel necessary to come into the training, and then uh, whoever they see uh, what they want from, they'll uh, put through to, to doing the actual show. You get to learn the entire show. You actually get to go into the show, uh, some people within a week, uh, you get to go into the show in, uh, in New York and perform for half of the show and, and they see how it goes and then you keep training and keep learning different, uh, different numbers and then eventually you go into the whole show if, uh, if you continue to do well, yeah. Our job as a band is to sort of create a, a, a musical landscape for, for the Blue Men to exist in and to also underscore the action on the stage as it's happening. So we have to be glued to the action at all times watching the actors and be ready to react to what they do. We try to use instruments that are, that are common, that, that you see uh, in pop music and in other forms of music, in unique and interesting ways. And this is one of those instruments. Uh, this is called the talking drum. It's typically the melodic voice in an African drum ensemble. Uh, but we use it in the show to provide uh, like a sound effect or uh, uh, a scoring moment when the blue men are doing something in particular. For example, they may, they may do something where they catch something in their mouth, and for that you'll hear sound like that. Uh, there are other times in the show where we use this as it was originally intended. We'll play a melody on it. You know, the, the, one of the most um, positive experiences that I've had with this company as opposed to working in, in other with other theatrical organizations I've been doing theater for a very long time is that we're always looking for how to push that envelope a little further we're always looking for how we can make that experience just a little bit better how to refine what we're doing how to how to push things uh, you know to a new place and so that's that's a very uh, that's a very big goal for us we, we talk a lot about the show uh, with each other, with our, just performer to performer, and, and also keep that line of communication open to our directors to, to make sure that something that we, we think is working is working, and something that we think could be better can be better, and, and, and we just refine that process as we go. Like one of the things we do is we do actually change the material in the show when we feel it needs uh, a refreshing. But we do the same even with the other pieces of music that, we, that are ours, that we've composed, even pieces that have been in the show uh, since the very beginning. We have a couple pieces, kind of oldies but goodies, in the show that are sort of blue man staples that people recognize as being, um, you know, almost... Uh, inseparable from the character, uh, but we still refine those pieces as we go out. And of course, as you mentioned, as technology changes, uh, if we implement something new, even if it's a new light or a new piece of technology, uh, you know, we have some, some things in our show, and one of the main um, focuses of the show is sort of kind of poking fun at technology and sort of the way that it's infiltrated society. So as, as those things change, we try to update our material uh, to reflect, you know, what's going on in, in culture and, and in the world around us. I've, I've been here a few times, 
toured with the, you know, when I was younger, did the did the sleeping in a van for for ten months of the year with my rockabilly band, and and you know have been here for, for other tours that I've done, and you know we, it's it's a treat, you know, to get to come to a place like Nashville or Austin where you can just walk down a street and hear incredible music piping out of every door. You know, it's it's really inspiring because you don't see that in cities anymore. So we're definitely we take every opportunity we can to go out and see live music. And uh, the first night we got here, we hit up Roberts. We got the chance to take a tour of Zach Brown's studio the other day. Kind of walked across the street, knocked on the door, and they let us in. And he was there. Uh, a couple of us met Vince Gill the other day. So yeah, we're definitely going to take in as much as we can in Nashville before we move on.